Hello my friends, this is Gosia from Cosmic Agency. Today I'm a little bit in a different location. I will be in this new location for the next month. I am somewhere in Finland, in fact. Yes, but this video today is actually going to be about our trip and our conference and our stay and our presentation in Nevada in the USA. It's going to be quite a long video, but as I was editing, I just couldn't remove anything. I think it's all very interesting and it portrays my experience with that conference. And not only the conference, with the trip itself. It starts actually when I was leaving Poland. So it's a kind of a journal of what was going on and you know with the, with some of the events leading up to our presentation there in Laughlin, Nevada and I hope you can enjoy it. I hope you can enjoy it. It's uh I was enjoying it very much as I was editing it. So I hope I hope you will too. Our conference in Nevada actually went much better than I have ever expected. We were received with such a such a welcoming and supportive energy by the presenters, by the organizers of the conference, as well as um, by by the attendees, by the people themselves. Hello, by the way, to all of you, all of you who we have met. It was an honor to meet you and it was so fun to actually see you live and see the reactions and support and your comments and your questions. It was it was very, very, very cool and unexpected, as I said, because, you know, I'm pretty much locked up in my room as I do these videos. And then, you know, I know we do have support because we I read the comments, but then actually to see that energy coming through and it's, it's just unbelievable. And I have to really, really, really say thank you to the organizers of the event, to Bob Brown, to Heather and to Nikki, for such an such an amazing energy and welcoming, welcoming um, and very very open mind and and just general attitude, thank you so much. Thank you so much again for inviting us and um, for having such a such a warm uh, such a warm approach to us and and to our work in general. What I really really enjoyed as well was actually. A mysterious meeting with Jim Nichols, who is the artist the, who um, who painted those famous drawings of of Semyase when she was coming out of the Billy Billy Mayer's ship. It was a very very interesting encounter we had with him. Actually, as soon as he saw us, that's that's something very strange. As soon as he saw us, and he didn't even know who we were and that we are presenting there at the conference, he saw us there at the vendors' room. He looked at us and he was like, you are, you are Pleiadians. And um, he said s some more things. And then we told him, well, mm, well, not precisely perhaps in that way. We didn't come down from the ship, but as, as far as I know, <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, um, we do have a presentation here. And then when he, when he saw our presentation and that actually we are talking to the same crew as the Billy Mayer, that he seemed so excited and, and we received a lot of support from him as well. In fact, later on, he, uh, gifted us with two of his images, which thank you very much, uh, Jim Nichols, for that gift. It's very special. It's actually uh, one went to Dale, and the other one is on the wall uh, around my kitchen area. So thank you very much again. Everybody was just amazing. Everybody it was a great energy among the speakers and among the attendees. Uh, and I really truly want to want to um, invite you for the next year because I feel it was a great array of topics and great variety of speakers coming from all different uh, fields and approaches and angles. I think it was really, really, really great. So enjoy the video. I am not going to see you at the end. This is it. Enjoy the video and I will see you in the next one, in the next one. I'm not sure what the topic will be, probably something about portals, but for now, enjoy the video. Well, let's begin this adventure that I hope will end successfully. I'm not sure yet how it's going to end exactly, as I'm having issues 
but I have been having issues with the whole visa situation. I'm here in Krakow, Poland uh, to pick up my visa. I was informed like a few days ago, last moment, that my visa was issued. They actually had to help me calling the consulate in Poland, informing them that you know, uh, I am his co-speaker at the conference and please issue the visa, the visa or at least decide yes or no as soon as possible so we know, so we can get the tickets. So it was also hectic. They finally said yes, I had to come here with my passport because they have to glue, they have to glue the visa into my passport. Today is Friday. My flights to Las Vegas are on Wednesday. They were purchased in a rush very hurriedly. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, apparently I have to come back and for my visa on Monday. I thought it was going to be done today and I hope it's going to be all okay on Monday. I can finally get my visa and then go to Warsaw and continue, continue this adventure. I'm just not feeling too great. I'm okay, but I feel a lot of adrenaline and a lot of things happening at the same time and a lot of things I need to process and then deal with and manage and coordinate and think about and I can't sleep well thinking about so many things at the same time. Second time I'm coming to Poland to deal with this visa situation. I've been waiting for it for two months. Um, even Dale had to interfere and call them. And when they finally said, okay, you have your visa, then I'm going, I'm going to come and just pick it up. And one burden off my shoulders. And now I have to wait till Monday in this anxious state because, yeah, I have it, but you never know. I don't trust them. And at the same time, I have so many videos accumulated. So I feel a bit overwhelmed. Because then, yeah, exactly, then I'm still thinking about what might happen at the border because sometimes they don't let people in and no it's not being pessimistic i'm actually quite a positive person normally it's just that the accumulation of all these different scenarios and things and and bureaucratic details and i hate bureaucracy and things like that mm. two years ago i was just a normal person on the street and just so much happening in, the f in so little time and it's it's cool it's it's exciting i i am the one making it happen but at the same time it's so intense and i just so can't wait to be there already and just reach the hotel and sit down on the bed and i made it i'm here and then go to the desert and wow I got the visa. Wow. <laughs> and it's for 10 years. Look at this. Ha ha ha. I'm very happy. Oh, the first step is behind me. It's an important step. Now it seems that some storm is, is developing in Europe and the flights are cancelled in England. There's always something going on. Like when Dale was coming in September, there were also storms over California or something, big hurricanes. Well, let's see. At least I have this. So now get this situation. All right, I have my visa, all is fine. I'm here in the city of Krakow buying a converter, US plug, etc. Well, guess what? In Germany now, there's a strange storm called Sabrina that is supposed to be hitting now, these days, between 8 and 11. Yesterday in Frankfurt, 
all planes were cancelled and I am going through Frankfurt on Thursday. I mean, we don't have many storms in Europe. It's not like, you know, we live close to the ocean. We don't have tornadoes and things like that. So it's quite annoying. It's like I can't relax. There's always something. A storm now! Two days before my flight from Frankfurt. Yeah, it's hitting Poland too, as you see. It's very windy. Something very similar happened to Dale when he was coming last September. Well, I'm back in my room here in Krakow. Tomorrow I'm going back to... Well, I'm not back. I'm going to Warsaw. And at least I'm enjoying some Polish food, which I like very, very much. It's one of my favorite foods in the world. We have a lot of soups, very rich, rich soups. It's like our first, first dish, first plate. And then we have different kinds of like little salads on the side, potatoes, and this is some kind of vegetarian something. And uh, yeah, it's very cheap here in Poland to eat and very, very good food. So uh, at least I'm enjoying these last days having some Polish good food. challenge getting through the US border I'll tell you why later I'm so freaking out I'm just I can't believe I'm here but I still had the last step ahead of me and I'm super excited but super nervous I just want to get it over with and I'm here and I made it oh my god oh my god I made it I'm here still at the airport. I had some trouble. I'll tell you later. I'm still shaking and I can't believe I made it. I was detained for two hours by the inspection. By, by the inspection. I will tell you later because I'm on the street and uh, I'm not really comfortable people around. Well, but I'm still like shaking so I'm, I'm not sure. I, I mean I'm very happy and excited and relieved but also still shaking. After I don't know how many months of working on this and I don't know how many hours of traveling and now let me explain why I'm feeling so sentimental about this why this seems so important to me don't mind me I look so bad because of the whole trip you know I used to live in the States two years and I also lived in Nevada for two months in Reno and also around Las Vegas that was 18 years ago with my American boyfriend so I have a lot of memories here a lot of adventures that happened a lot of sentiments and 18 years uh, passed and all this time all this time you know I couldn't really go well I couldn't I didn't even try but I had that little situation 18 years ago that it seems that it's following me nothing really i didn't do anything but in the US usa they are very strict so and a small situation um follows you around so that's why a year ago i applied for a us visa 
in Madrid, in Spain, and it was denied for no specific reason, actually. I wasn't even given a reason, but I, I'm thinking it's to do with that situation. And so that's why, I don't know, this, this time it seemed like such a fantasy to come. And I'm not just speaking about the conference, but about coming to Nevada especially. It was actually my favorite state. I drove a lot around the desert and I lived here, like I said, for two months. Uh, I have a lot of memories in this area. So it was like a, such a fantasy, a forbidden fruit, especially being rejected once a year ago. So, you know, like when you are not allowed something, it becomes something more, something more special and magical in your imagination. So it was such a fantasy <laughs> for me <laughs> to be here. And this was such an opportunity, uh, this trip and this conference to, to, to be here. So yes, yeah, so we got, when we got through the passport control, everybody was going through and they stopped me and they took me to the detention center the detention center where there were about 50 people so all waiting for their cases to be examined and the silence in the room and it was very serious and there were about six seven immigration officer officers there examining questioning people and questioning very hard accusing them of lying threatening to send them back uh, I'm not saying they were not right, but still the, 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 the environment, the atmosphere was very stressful. Everybody was very nervous. And I was sitting there for two hours thinking, oh my gosh. But in a way, I was already prepared that this might happen. That's why I was saying, okay, the last, the last, the last point, the last challenge is to go through the immigration. And so after two hours, they finally called me and they looked at my visa and they said, okay, so... It seems like you have a visa and it seems like uh, the American embassy worked on your case for a long time, no? I said, yeah, for two months. So they said, okay, well then it seems like they figured it out. So thank you very much, you can go. <laughs> I missed my shuttle to Laughlin, so I had to wait three more hours at the airport. And I took another, another shuttle and here I am and now. I think I can't resist it. I think I'm gonna take the camera and have a walk around. That's what I'm saying, with all this trouble and me living here before, it's, ah, I'm so, I just cannot believe I'm here. Tomorrow I will show you the, the, the view. I'm actually on the 10th floor. I have a whole day tomorrow uh, to myself. It's Friday tomorrow. The conference begins on Saturday. Dale is coming Saturday night. Well, I better go back. I have been without sleep for I don't know how many hours. Tomorrow I'm going to explore a lot in the day. I just had to go out a little bit. Today I want to spend some time exploring this beautiful area and the deserts and maybe the town, um, all of it, the whole day. Uh, so let's go. She makes his coffee. She makes his bed. She does the laundry. She keeps him fed. When she was 21, she wore her mother's legs. moment here with the desertic area in Lachlan. I'm still very close to the city. You can uh, you can see it, to the town. It's very cool. I just can't believe I'm here. Lots of memories here. Lots of memories. Well, not maybe in Lachlan, but in Nevada in general. I used to live here. Uh, well, in the States, two years. And I lived here in Nevada two months. I just, I just, oh my God, there's a bird. Big bird. I just love 
I just love Nevada so much. I love these areas. Nevada, Arizona, the deserts and the mountains, the space. Love it and the whole atmosphere. It's really cool. It's really cool. So far, I like it. The atmosphere is very chilled. Very chilled. I totally forgot about the tip, about the tipping here, the custom. I, I got some food and on the receipt, they had me fill out the, the tip. Uh, so it's, it's very, I totally forgot about that custom. We don't have that in Europe. Anyway, let's continue exploring. It's very hot actually. The sun is, go, is going away, but it's still very, very warm for this time of the year. With no expression upon her face. When she was 36, she met him at their door. That I'm sorry, I don't love you anymore. Everything runs right on time. Here's a practice and design. Spin and polish till it shines. He thinks he'll be her. I'm exploring. This is a river walk, a walk by the Colorado River. What you see on the other side is Arizona and from what I understand it's a different time zone. This is a very nice walk that connects all the casino resorts located at the river. There is a water taxi that I will take as well so I'm really enjoying it and the sunset colors are very beautiful too. Well little by little I will go home, well I will go to my room even though I just want to soak up as much as I can being outside but I want to go I will I will work a little bit on my presentation on Tuesday and and then later on this evening I think I might I might go to a to a local country bar I was really missing those places even though I'm not really a country girl but I like it especially old classical country and I like those classical country bars especially here in the terrain in this in the area for country look at that boat some kind of party going on, on that boat Look at that, the floor of this hotel is like crop circles. It's amazing, I love these kinds of designs. This is Saturday, the next day, today at night, day will be coming. I think in the afternoon they start the conference, but I decided to take this day off and just explore the area. There are beautiful trails here around, very close to Laughlin. There's actually Laughlin right there behind me and they have all kinds of trails. You can walk by the river, you can go more into the desert. So that's what I will do today. And I think I am going to come back here sometime during the week. I just can't imagine myself being at the conference for seven days, locked up in the building and just surrounded by people all day. Impossible knowing how I am, but I will enjoy it anyway and I will have a lot of fun. I'm just a bit introverted sometimes, so I need to recharge in solitude, in nature. The land of the midnight sun is bathed in celestial light. In the pristine freedom of snow and sky, you discover the sound of silence, wherein dwell the radiant colors of the feminine self. Soft as snow, strong and deep as ice.
This is just too much. Oh wow. So special. There is a Laughlin there. It's where I came from. Colorado River. And just this view emerged on the other side. Breathe the freedom, air so pure, blood is strong and heart and pure. This is so cool. Not just the plant, all of it. Oh, I can't believe it. I feel like I'm inside of my own head. Like I'm inside of my own idea. Like I am inside of my own mental game that I have created. In a way, it is like that. Like I'm inside my own idea of this place. Like a, yeah, like a, like a virtual reality that I have created. Oh, so crazy. Can you hear the Look at this place here. I think I'm gonna sit here a little bit and maybe contemplate this view and meditate a bit. I think when I started off today, I didn't expect that I would find such beautiful places and such remote, amazing contemplation spots. Colors are reflected light, embrace the void, there is no night. Let the wind comb your hair, the midnight sun reflects the fair. Run, daughter, run. Run to the land of the midnight sun. Can you hear the You see this rock over here? This spot here, that's what I wanna be. That's what I wanna wait for the sunset. I was thinking today, walking around and also yesterday looking out of my window at the hotel, looking at Laughlin around and I felt moved. I felt very proud, I can say, of, of doing this work and, and receiving a type of recognition. And I mean recognition is received, is being received every day by every one of you who is watching the videos and who likes the information but I mean I just got this feeling of you know of, of this kind of recognition that someone actually valued the information enough to invite me and Dale to this congress to pay our tickets to pay our stay and I felt you know and also with with these big names in the ufology field and just it happened within two years you know two years ago I was just an ordinary person teaching English at school and now this is happening and I felt proud because you know I am a Tigetan person being immersed right now into this earth experience and if this was part of my job to be here and to deliver this information to the people then I, I felt I felt proud I felt really proud that the Tigetan information is being receiving is being is receiving the acknowledgement and and here I am, I will be talking at the conference with so many people watching and, and next to these, again, big figures in the ufology. How did this happen? Just within two years. 
so I'm really happy I'm really happy and moved and 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 proud proud of our work and proud of what we achieved in these two years proud of my team up there and proud of Robert proud of Dale proud of what we have done you know it's it's really it's really amazing well this is it I'm going to wrap this day it's getting dark I wanted to stay here until the sunset I I'm here till the sunset but I still have a way back so uh, I, I I will start walking toward uh, the exit of this area right now it was a wonderful day more than I ever expected amazing amazing beautiful colors now I'm seeing all around me I can't stop looking around uh, but I will slowly walk 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 back I am back! Okay, Dale is coming. Dale is coming. I just called him from the front desk. He's coming. I'm coming! Hey! <laughs> you are. I made it. I'm making a oh video. God. Oh my god. So Hi! Hello! Oh, oh, oh good to see yes, you. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's all you have? That's it. Okay, perfect. You know me, I travel light. Oh, okay. Here is Dale. What a trip. Say hello. Hello, everybody. I'm making behind the scenes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yes, it Here is. I am. Here Got he about is. 12 or 15 hours later, exhausted, of course. How was the flight and everything? I was late an hour and 45 minutes again, held over. Yeah, okay. The plane from Cleveland. It ah, okay, did okay. Did not leave for an hour and 45 minutes. But at minutes. least you didn't have any connections, right? So you no. didn't have to... And so, otherwise it was good. Okay, perfect. Had the same driver you had for the shuttle. How do you know? He knew you. He knew your name. He said, I know who she was, yeah. Really? Talked to you, yeah. It was okay, cool. yeah, we well, didn't talk yeah. much, but okay. Yeah, that was great. All right, nice. So. Okay, well, let me just now talk to Dale uh -huh. in private. All right. <laughs> Very uh, low here. Two cents. Oh. Damn, what do we do to get a drink around here? <laughs> <laughs> we are playing really slow because we order some drinks and you know, drinks come free here as long as you play. So we are waiting and waiting. I don't have enough cash to keep going. Okay, ready? We found this. This is on the second floor. And here, oh, it disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> it could have gone back. It was there. You there it is. Oh, there it is. UFO, UFO Mega oh, Conference. Yeah, it's appeared again. Yeah, there it is. UFO Mega Conference. No so, problem. Let's go. All right. Hello, what's your name? Raul Ruiz. Where are you from? I'm from, uh, uh, from Sacramento, California. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what would you like to tell us here at the UFO conference about the information that you have been following in our channel? Because Raul actually came up to us and he says he knows us, so we are very happy to include him in, uh, in this video. He's our first guest. Well, I, um, I'm here uh, because I started following the channel approximately a year ago, uh, and it's been a Honestly, it's been a life-changing, um, I guess it's been life-changing for me altogether. And so I just wanted to come in and say hi to everybody, especially to Dale and Gosha. And um, just I follow the videos, I, uh, you know, listen to what Subaru and, uh, and all the Tigan friends say. And uh, it's, it's been a, like I said, it's a changing transformation for me. And I appreciate that, and I'm going to continue doing it. Down and sideways, says, yeah, we're familiar with it. And I said, um, so, 
It's supposed to be about Pleiadians. Hello, I'm here with Honobi. How are you all doing? Hi there. Hello, we just bumped into each other here now. And, awesome. And yeah, I just wanted to include her in my video. <laughs> Lots of love to you. <laughs> ET contact, new era. <laughs> yes. So one thing that stood out to me was a lot of these stone structures have similarities to Kailash and Temple, right? Like, uh, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with that. So much stuff that almost no one is looking at. We don't fit on this planet. Physiology doesn't fit on this planet. Hello there, what's your name? Hi, Gosha. I'm Lynette Morris. Okay, how are you doing? Very oh, nice to meet you. Oh, sure spectacular. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I also learned new things. I've learned about the black goo. That's something new. Um, I want to know more about it. It's very interesting. And um, I just love the fact that you could come to it. I just love it. <laughs> Anything else you would like to transmit to the world? Any message um, to the listeners? Just love everybody. Just be good in your heart and love. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Now we are here to get some dinner. Absolutely. We are waiting in line for dinner. The dilemma Flander that Armstrong flew was so difficult to control that it would need between 100 and 1,000 adjustments per second to control it. Here I am playing little machines. Bail is relaxing. And I just put in 20 euros, no, 20 dollars. And I lost it. That's okay. Evolution, our evolution is multidimensional. Through what we perceive as time, time's irrelevant. If you're immortal, which you are, what the heck is time to you? On the hand of the spaceships, coupled with Billy's description of the extraterrestrials, I fashioned a preliminary rendering of how a landed Pleiadian beam ship and its pilot might look. Of course, this was not to be my only UFO painting inspired by contact from the Pleiades, which remains to this day my favorite UFO case. Look at that, this is the author. I'm making that behind the scenes video of this. Where from, are you from? from my channel. I'm from, or I was born in Poland. <laughs> and where? I was born in Poland. Poland? Yes. I live in Barcelona now. Yeah, so this is Jim Nichols. You don't have any relatives in Austria, do you? I, not as, not, as my, not, not that I know of, yeah. Look at that! He drew those paintings! Wow! <laughs> Look at those mountains! They're gorgeous! <laughs> they are, right? <laughs> they are beautiful! Wow! Yeah! Let's have a little walk. I wish I was in shape to climb those. <laughs> hey, where are we going now? We should leave We're going to be going yes, yes. out to uh, look for gonna, UFOs. We're going to have oh, a really? field event. <laughs> and we're going That's out into the field in the dark. Oh. Nice dark, yeah. Cool. I don't Sounds know the great. location yet, but it right. should be fun. Okay. It's a group of 13 of us. Yep. And if we don't come back, you know where we went. <laughs> <laughs> great. So it's a less than 131 miles, right? <laughs> we don't want to get stuck in the desert.
Dan, are you ready for our expedition? What's that? I'm filming. Are you ready? Yeah, almost. Yeah. But as soon as you'll get one of those uh, uh, goggles uh, for uh, the first guy who started utilizing night vision goggles to see a sky was Ed Grimsley. He passed away, I don't know, four, four years ago. So, right uh, there. Oh, it's too bad I can see, but that's Pleiades. Uh, Oh. Do you feel? Do you think? Do you feel you are you are from there too? Oh, I know I am. Pleiadian? I uh, yeah. I need you to ask to find out for sure, but I think I already know. Do you do you th uh, do you have a specific place in Pleiades? Do you I, feel? I, I think Era. Taigeta. Era too? Yes. Oh, I'm from. Oh, <laughs> did I? Okay. I, yes. Yeah, they told me I was from Era, Era too, and he is from 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 there as well. Yeah. Uh, I've known for a long time. I just never had confirmation. So here we are in the desert I love to be in the desert any time of the day and night I love the sound of the dry ground under my feet and the stars you can see so many stars and we see Pleiades as well uh, they have some goggles they're gonna give us so yeah for me for me honestly you know this is a cabal territory so we were told there are no real benevolent extraterrestrial ships around here is just just military basically sometimes there might be but not not really many so I'm just happy to be here just to just to be in a desert feel the rocks under my feet it's too bad you can't see anything I can barely see anything and remember you're looking two three hundred thousand miles away and so when you look at the planes like this and it's so like you can see behind the Pleiades, how how far can these actually see into? Well, the goggles set up to infinity, as much as wow. you can actually see with your eyes. That's that's what that's you incredible. you see. Gotcha. I don't look at it. They don't like being shot. Look, 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 look no, at. I never shoot them directly. Look, look. Now I just took a little. I can't look, even look, see look them. Over, over there, more or less, like a sporadic, sporadic pattern over there. We thank you. We love you. Thank this you for you. It's really, it's amazing. It's for you, it's for this conference. Yeah. For it's like moving sporadically here thank and there, blinking. You. Is it high? Look, look. Uh, I know. It's almost like more. No, it's not very high. Really? It's not very low. Really? You know, I can't see. You can see. It's amazing. It's not a plane. No, no, no. I, I will argue with anybody. If I have never seen anything around. like that. Where is it? It's, it's almost, almost straight up. Look how it's moving, everybody. This is the, this see? is the most no. definitive thing we've seen. Just keep it, keep it, not, so it, not moving. I saw this. I saw it earlier. If, uh, if you're looking directly, it's kind of bouncing. If you're looking see. directly at the eighties, it would be at two o'clock. First of all, when you want to talk to the ships, be not afraid. Have no fear whatsoever. They're not going to harm you. The next thing that you need to do is basically be very quiet, concentrate your energy on what you're looking for and what you want. Now they will come most of the time and interact with you, but they're not here to do a circus show, okay? If they feel you're too afraid or that it's going to affect you in a negative way, they won't allow you to see them, okay? So a little bit of quiet, a little bit of concentration. Now I found that in groups, People tend to wander, they play with their phones, they're busy looking at lights and talking and all this stuff. That doesn't work too well. Just concentrate your energy, never take your eyes off the sky, because the moment you do is the minute they're going to show up. What I typically will do is send out a series of laser blasts into certain areas that I know that they will come and congregate. I do this in the city, okay, right in the suburbs. So they will come even into the city, right into the, right around the houses. It makes no difference to them, as long as we really, really, really want that. They'll even come in the midst of airplanes. They like that because they blend. Okay. So when they show up, what they will typically do is give what we call or what I call a flash bulb. You guys all remember flash bulbs from the old days in the cameras. It's a single pulse. It's very bright, and they go flash. And it's a point source, not a trailing streak or anything like that. If it's a trail or a streak, it's a meteor or a satellite, but a single pulse. And when they do that, that says, okay, we're here, we're ready to communicate. At that point, they typically will flash the laser as long as there are no other craft in the sky. We do not point lasers directly at the ships ever. That's rude. And we don't hold the beam on them. We pulse short pulses and they respond. 
So, if you'd like to try that, we just quiet down a little bit. We'll keep looking toward the sky. You can use your uh, binoculars or your infrareds and concentrate on that area. Just concentrate. Ask them to please come. Talk to us. We're truly interested. We want contact. Send them to their visions and thoughts with love. And contact. Open heart, open mind. Ask them, hey, we love you. We thank you. Can you can you do it more for my friends? Oh wow, you know what? You're pointing at a can totally different one than I'm saying. Friends, thank you. We love you. <laughs> when you say we love you, it helps. So everybody, please. All you have we, to do is love just you. mentally. We love you. They can feel the. What else are you gonna send them? The fact of the matter is, is that it bothers me that these guys would single you out when there's as much as a thousand others on YouTube claiming as much and more silliness than anything we've ever presented. So I don't understand why it would strike such a chord, except that you're infringing on something that's near and dear to their hearts and their level of research and their theories and their inquiries and their level of research has absolutely no facts uh -huh. based on it. There isn't a damn thing in astronomy that they really know for certain. It's all conjecture, it's all theory, it's all hypothesis, it's all unproven mathematics. Right. You know, most of it is unproved. They can't prove there was a Big Bang or not a Big Bang. They can't prove you know, all of the theories of dark energy, dark matter, as I said, the novas, black holes, those are all theoretical, mathematical models, and sometimes they get lucky and something falls into place. For the most part, scientists are dealing with 3D, third density energy levels. They do not believe in the ether. They do not believe in that everything is frequency or energy uh, in that respect, as we do, uh, you know. So I, I find it curious that they would attack what you've said or what I've said or what Swaru has say, stated. And yes, we understand that the inf information that Swaru is presenting to us is a small, quick explanation for extremely complex science. Yeah. We've admitted that many times. And you know what I think also? You're right. We are, in, we are like uh, entering their territory and it just came to me now that why they are not attacking all these other people. Because all these other people who, for example, channel higher density beings, uh, stuff like that, they are not really going into scientific uh, concepts, you know, no, they are just giving not. messages, you know, of a more Appreciate. spiritual nature. So now I'm we there to go into the scientific territory and offer scientific ideas, and that's their domain. How dare we? You know, it's like they want us to keep to keep to our spiritual stuff, and they cannot accept that. Hey, we also actually have something to say on a science angle, but that science is not going to be your 3D fit. It's going to be 5D idea, idea-based right. science, so and I can't accept that. They're missing a great deal of the picture. Well, it's one hour and 15 minutes to our presentation. I am, I have been very, very, very nervous, combined with very, very, very excited. I am extremely excited to to share our story and to share what we have to say and what we have lived these two years. This is the most extraordinary adventure. But I'm also very nervous. So, yes, I don't know what to say. Dale is not in the room, he's downstairs. I'm gonna go and get him and, and yeah. 
Our next presentation is controversial. We know this. At the same time, our next presentation is one that a lot of you, an awful lot of you, are really looking forward to. When we consider the fact that Miss Goja and Dale have several hundred thousand people, regular followers on their social media site, and upwards of five million independent visitors to their informational site, you must admit that an awful lot of people are really very interested in the information, the communication that they are facilitating. We present, you decide. Please welcome Ms. Gosia Duzak and Dale Harder. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I'm just an ordinary person. Um, no. This that something <laughs> extraordinary happens to us, and we, this is our story, and we, we want to share. This is like the greatest adventure of our life. Uh, what has happened to us? Basically, in one sentence, which I will explain a little more. Um, we have been in contact uh, with the Tigetan Pleiadian crew, who are right now in the orbit of the air of the Earth. It's very important to mention this is not channeled information. We, we do not channel. We have done over 300 videos over these two last years with a very detailed information about actually what they are saying. And this is so important and so exciting because all of us here have been talking about the UFO site things and going on the desert watch and seeing the ancient sites. But this is pure information. This is I'm here to tell you what they actually have to say. They have been talking, they are here, they are people, just like us, okay? Now, <laughs> hold on to your seats, this is, I'm gonna say something exciting. This is actually, uh, this is actually the same crew, the same crew that has been, that, that has talked to Billy Mayer. They have never left. They are right there, right now, in the orbit. And they, since that time, they haven't had such an open, direct, contact with the humans until now, until now. What I will ask you is to have an open mind and consider the information that I will present. Later, if it interests you, consider the information that is presented in the, in the, in the channel. And then I think, and those of you who know me already will, will agree, and then you might agree that this is the most extraordinary direct contact that we have had um, on planet Earth, core of the of the information, and I will, I will get to the information a bit later, is to basically liberate people from the matrix and from the system. Okay, this is the very important. <laughs> They could 
will create themselves because they will have this connection with the source. So we have created them metaphysically speaking. They are only some product. They are only the creation and we are the creators. My family is 800,000 years in advance of humanity. That's a long time. But they're here and all they want to say is hi. Now as far as the scientific part of it, I want to explain to you that when you're in 5D looking down into 3D, that you can see both sides, you contain that 3D. But when you're in 3D looking up, we're like fish under three feet of water looking through ice. Three feet of ice and it's very murky and we have no clue. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably one of the greatest things that has ever happened to any of us. My family decided after a long difficult thing with Billy Meyer, whom I communicated with, whom I knew, whom I followed, and our crew, that they weren't going to do this kind of thing again. So they're trying a new approach. Okay, We're not here to make a cult following. We love you for being here and hearing us. But we don't want a cult following. We don't want people that are blind. We want you to think for yourselves. We want nothing in return. We don't make money off of this. We don't sell books. We don't have CDs. We don't have DVDs. Everything that is offered from my family for you is free. The information that is in those videos, ladies and gentlemen, is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And she probably has enough information to make, say, a thousand videos by the time you're done. By the time I'm done. By the time we're done. We figure we'll be around a little longer. Really? I'm sorry if any of you are in the, in the audience, but we are so tired of the UFO investigators. <laughs> and they are very tired of the general approach and how stuck they are in the old questions and in all the... <laughs> In old, uh, in old way of looking at the whole phenomena, they are still asking the same questions as in the 80s. They are basically kind of ridiculing the whole thing. Yes, very important. We have been doing this uh, mainly using internet. However, well, using the chat. However, we also had the audio connection a few times, so we could actually hear them and have a live audio conversation with with them, with one of them, with a man, okay, with a Tegeton pilot. And also, we saw one of them physically, however, we cannot discuss this much, okay? We don't have authorization. So, but that's what we were told that we were limited. And that's what we wrote our genetics, okay? So there is no genetic alterations. It's all in our mind. It was done mentally. It was done mentally. And we have been under this mental control for thousands of years. We are kept in this artificial lethargic state and mental control for thousands of years and that's what they are here to undo to tell us who we truly are and to awaken us our true self okay so we can even rewrite our genetics to our original state we can do it let's not blame the reptilians because they changed us genetically no, no, no the only they always say she always says the only thing that limits you is the idea that you are limited. Me conocen como me conoce como Sarah Eleven en Telegram. Bueno, una cosa es que antes de conocer a Suaru a través de ustedes con Bosch y Robert era que ya antes percibía es todo este movimiento de la Matrix que algo no estaba muy bien que incluso yo no creía en esto de las religiones incluso no creía ni 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 en la historia de, de lo que es tanto es polémico lo de Jesús y todas esas cosas y, y lo que hizo el, el, la, el mensaje suave es dar un extra como un extra punch o, o como una energía booster, like a power algo así para estar más, como te digo confidente con lo que estamos viviendo todos los que estamos viviendo acá, las semillas estelares como le dicen pues ese es el agradecimiento a, a su aro y a través de ustedes que están haciendo un, un trabajo genial 
super super especial y gracias a todos los tajitos. I'm Bill from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, did you come here for the conference? I came oh, for the conference so to good. see Goja and Dale. Oh, really? Okay, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's, a, it's a delight to have met you, uh, truly. And what did you think of the presentation? And um, what um, what do you think of the whole work that we do of the of the information that Tagetans present? The work is so impressively genuine. The work is so impressively real. One of the things that makes the work and the information so e easy to believe is that it's so clear and simple. It's not complicated. It's challenging and the information that you are availing to people is making it very uncomfortable for some people to, to have to choose between making changes in their lives or continuing on a path that is uh, the, the same old stuff, the same old way, and wondering why nothing changes. Uh, yes. the, the Pleiadian uh, team that you work with is so compassionate and understanding and yet unmistakably clear in the messaging that they are putting forth. And it's truthful, it's easy, and it's real. Thank you so much. Anything you want to say to them? Hello, thank you. We love you. <laughs> we love you down here. My team from Orion says hello because they know you and I think they work with you sometimes. Thank you for everything. When I start doing stuff like I'm going to make frequency devices, I'm going to, like every you know, sure. poor guy spin. You know, okay. one of the things that's really important to us in our human experiences is emotions. I mean, yeah. Do they feel the same emotions as us? More. Love, anger. That's why is I'm it, so emotional. Is, more. is it the same intensity? <laughs> yeah. Is it more intensity? More intensity. More intensity. Yeah. Yes. yes. Of course they are different. Like, everybody is different on, on the ship. There are some yeah. who are less emotional, others are more emotional. Mm -hmm. But on the, on the general on a general note they are even more emotional than other races even some races like Andromedans make fun of them for their yeah. emotionality mm. okay, ready? I don't have too much I to probably do. could talk more about that because I believe about the UFO because uh, having a spirit uh, with a uh, oh you are? <laughs> yeah. the commander cool. right. the Ashtar commander is a sensitive okay, subject here. So you have to smile now. Okay. 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 Too much, okay. no, te too much yeah, technology. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell them there's only one person in five that is real? <laughs> really? Oh, really? I didn't tell them. Yeah. Only one person in five, they told us, is actually That's three of us person. here? Wait a minute, one person in five is actually real? Yes. Hola, ¿cómo están? Habla, uh, soy Gabriel, Gabriel Rodríguez. Eres Gabriel Rodríguez, ¿de dónde eres? Yo soy de Tijuana, California, resido actualmente en la ciudad de San Diego, California. Sí, ¿y, y has venido aquí específicamente para esta conferencia? Específicamente vengo eh, invitado en mi corazón a, a, estas, uh, a este evento de UFO Mega Conference, pero exclusivamente a, a ver y a confirmar toda la información que nos ha llegado en forma directa todos los días de Agencia Cósmica y específicamente por Bosha. Ajá. Entonces te gusta la información, te ha llegado, te Realmente sí, ayuda? me convence. Yo soy una persona que me gusta eh, en un abanico muy amplio eh, tomar y ver circunstancias, pero siempre la información está dentro y tiene que haber eco. Y ese eco, no tengo duda alguna, eh, que me me identifica mucho uh -huh. con toda la información que yo, yo no tengo absolutamente ningún átomo de duda. Eh, quiero mandar un saludo a, a Robert, un excelente trabajo que está haciendo él y Gosha, es un esfuerzo tremendo, yo sé que mucha gente no sabe apreciar eso, pero afortunadamente nosotros sí sabemos que hacen un esfuerzo. Le quiero mandar de todo corazón, de la forma más sencilla y sincera, 
nuestro agradecimiento por todo su esfuerzo y quiero que sepan que cuentan con nosotros. Nos dejamos eh, venir, del de, tomamos la decisión el domingo, nos dejamos venir para ver a Gosha y al señor Teo y padre. gracias a Dios tuvimos la, el honor de conocerlos y convivir con ellos. Perfecto. Un saludo Robert, <risa> tú no nos conoces pero nosotros a ti sí, sí. ¿no? sí. a ustedes sí. Okay, another day, another day, awesome things are happening. We were actually invited on the panel today. There was a, there was a, someone who got sick from what I understand. And then me and Dale got invited uh, to join the panel with other experiencers. I think there'll be five people together. So let's see what this is about. I'm not sure exactly, but exciting, exciting. Jim Nichols, Jim Nichols, who actually made these images, he gave us these images as a gift. This is, uh, he drew those paintings. I never knew who drew, who drew those paintings, but that's him. Uh, here, this is Semyase with Billy Mayer's case. This is Semyase with Billy Mayer getting off the ship. Thank you very much, Jim, if you're watching this. Uh, this is this is awesome. Uh, we definitely felt the connection with him and and he with us. He with us. He. He he was definitely drawn to our story, and uh, <laughs> it's all it's all quite quite exciting. Um, yeah. <laughs> mostly uh, psycho psychologically, I'm becoming more, more and more isolated from the from the world as 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 we know. And also a strange strange thing that I've been feeling is I'm becoming more and more distant from the whole 3D reality. So it's like I'm not even here. Like the strange feeling sometimes I have is like I'm here but I'm not here, I'm not present. Like my my focal point of consciousness is actually somewhere else. And I feel like I'm just projecting him to interact with this for whatever reason. But I think all of us are like are going are all of us have this. It's just that this experience I think is opening me up to that more, to that multidimensionality like you said. Oh, I already said that. See? Great minds thinking alike there. <laughs> Study the theology of religion. You will find out that what we have today in our world that we're being led by and our destiny is being guided by our understanding of a theology of the other story that is will knock you out. A beautiful story. And so when the sun brings light into the world, we say they are in light or illuminati. They are illuminated. Highly intelligent secret societies knowing things in science and occultism and mysticism and war and technology that we do not know. Welcome back to Forbidden Knowledge News. I am having a blast here at the Laughlin UFO Mega Conference. I'm here with Goja Dujak and Dale Harder. They had a fascinating presentation, one that I don't think I've ever heard anything like before. Um, first of all, how are you guys enjoying the conference? So we received these beautiful gifts, the ones, Dale, me, and Robert from our friend and supporter, Mick. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Can you take me? I'm going to just say... Oh yeah? J just hold it, that's it. There you go. Oh, thank you so much. Look at that. Beautiful. Goja and Mick. And Mick. All right, and yeah. He's like a fan number one, you know, on the English channel. And Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank my you. pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, off on another adventure. Yes. yes. I'm so glad. Oh, you know it. I'm so glad we are getting out of the hotel a little bit. Yes, me too. Yeah, it gets a little stuffy in the room. The people are great, but you know, I just need a little change. Oh, it's of awesome, but you know, I tried so hard to get the US visa and I'm stuck in the, in the building. <laughs> How, I uh, Mick, what do you think about this whole conference? Are you having a good time? I am having a good time because I've met some people here of like mind and like spirit. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised how many of them recognized me as having ET roots. Yeah. Including Johnny, who said, I see ET in you. <laughs> and I just, I was like taken aback. I was Such like, whoa. A deal. <laughs> Experience of, of people just wanting to know 
and bringing themselves out here to find out. I just thought it was really cool. Mm -hmm. And it was an older demographic, which I wasn't expecting. Yes, it is. I mean, Laughlin itself is an yes. older demographic, which I also wasn't expecting. I, that I was expecting because before I came here, I watched all the travel vlogs on YouTube mm -hmm. about Laughlin, places to see. This, uh, this, this saloon I found on, on YouTube huh. in someone's video. And after you, <laughs> come on in. Okay, here we go. Go! <laughs> which way? Thank you. Oh, Where are we? We are in the Old yeah. Town Saloon. We are in the Games. Old Town Saloon. It's empty, but it's nice. Well, oh, yeah. Right now, Look at us. Michael Morgan. Uh, Hello. We're having such a wonderful time in Laughlin. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Hello there, what's your name? My name is Mick Flair. Perfect, and where are you from? I'm from Sacramento, California. Cool, and did you come here for the conference? I did, I came here specifically Ooh. to hear Gosia and Dale do their presentation. Awesome, and what did you think of the presentation? I thought the presentation was awesome. I thought it represented Cosmic Agency and the Tigetans message, especially the downloads that Swaru has been sending. And to have the people in the audience hear and actually feel what the messages are. It's one thing to watch the videos, which I've been doing for the last year or so, but it's another thing to have Gosha and Dale present them in their own words. And everyone was very receptive to it. Yes. Uh, it was an amazing feeling. And to sit in the front row and watch and listen to them, I believe people were connecting to it. And so uh, me, like I said, having followed for a year, I felt privileged to be able to experience this live. Excellent. And I think once the rest of the world sees it, it's going to catch in and people are going to start waking up rapidly. Any words you want to say to our crew? Yes, I want to say thank you so much, Tigetan crew, Swaru and uh, Dorkalel and Annika and everyone else up there. We so appreciate your efforts, that you care about humanity, that you care about us. We know we're related to you. I feel like I'm related to you. And we just thank you so much for your perseverance through all of this. And I wish you well. I'm here walking around the desert around Laughlin. Laughlin is very close, it's just here. It's a beautiful view, but you can't see much. I was here for the sunset and to relax a little. I walked. What I noticed is that when I was walking on the highway, people were stopping to want to drive me, to give me a ride. There was a lady and then there was a man and I didn't know if that was creepy or that super generous and helpful and friendly because in Europe that doesn't happen that way. I remember we were in Norway with uh, Robert and we actually wanted to hitchhike to get a ride and we couldn't. No one was stopping. And here I wasn't even asking and people stopped. Um, you know, the conference is going amazingly well much more than I ever expected, much better than I ever expected. So much support from so many people who came from so many places and I'm just really impressed. Even people who came for the first time and never saw our information came up to us and were, were, coming, were coming up to us and saying how much they liked it. And there was this one man who came with tears in his eyes and he said he was so moved and impressed and he gave me his necklace, the blue necklace. 
hello by the way, I don't know your name, but thank you so much. So I'm really impressed with how it went and how well it was received. Of course there are some people, I'm sure I heard, who are not going to be happy with everything I say, but it's okay. So we even were offered a panel, we were on the panel, and I really, really don't want to leave the US. Really. Um, I really like it. I really like it. I haven't been here for 18 years. I was missing it. I was missing different aspects of of this place. This, you know, of course, so many people are complaining about the US as a country and whatever. Yes, I understand that. I agree. But uh, there is also so many great things. And I'm mainly talking about the landscapes. I really love Nevada and such a variety here of different landscapes and cultures and environment. It's great. Well, let me go back. I think I'm gonna go with Dale to get some, get some food and I think there is some live band playing downstairs in the casino. So we might go to see that. And I'm cold. There is a strong cold wind today so that's why I'm all wrapped up. things called flying saucers and there were flying cigars and flying triangles and you draw one you draw one yourself that's good so there's nothing to be frightened of because they're just like everything else that we don't know they're just something different can 
aliens come in like different colors and green. Being awarded to Jordan Maxwell. Yeah. When you get seated, I'm going to let you hold your sister. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you, I think this thing weighs 50 pounds. All right, Jordan, I will put her safely over there for you. Give me your mic. Uh, I would like to say, take a moment to thank my host. Bob Brown, who has done so much to encourage me over the years. Yeah. Jordan, on behalf of myself and my partner Goja, who you've not yet met, we wanted to say congratulations on your Saucerian Award. We also wanted to tell you that we spoke to our crew earlier this evening. They have been watching. They wanted to pass along their congratulations to you as well for a lifetime of service and that the information that you have given us, they agree with and also the same that they've given us. So they wanted to say hello and to thank you for everything that you've done. Well, thank you. Dale. So, any comments? This is the last day of our conference here. Yeah. I how was how was the morning conference? Uh, you know, it's been a long conference. I think we're both a little pooped out. But, <laughs> uh, you know, it's been fun. I've enjoyed meeting all the people, and uh, we've been very, very well received. You know, so I have no complaints really. Everybody just adore, adores you. I mean, <laughs> if I'm not with you, they're always asking where's Gosia. So you know, uh, but uh, it's been very good. There's been a lot of great people. And they're just so hungry, so hungry for knowledge and information. And so, you know, even though it wasn't a huge Congress, it's still worthwhile because we're reaching some people and uh, the mandala or butterfly effect is, is in play. So hopefully it, it does some good. Mm -hmm. So far, I'd say it's been more positive than negative. Of course. You know, there's always a few detractors or things like that, but eh, take that and... No, but very few, and I personally, I haven't talked to any of no, them. No, I haven't talked to them. It's just what we heard just of... what we heard, Yeah, exactly. it's, it was exactly. no one really approaching us right. no. No, with criticism. It's been fantastic. We've met some great people. Yeah. We've made some good contacts, uh, you know, and it's, uh, there'll be a lot to do when we get back. Remember Mick? Mick, oh my God, <laughs> Mick was fantastic. Hello, Mick. Hi, Mick, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> he was yeah. something else. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. We even got a chance to go out last night and party. Oh yes! A bit. Oh my gosh! You know, they actually, they we actually went karaoke last night, and to the bar, local bar here, very nearby, and wow i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you they are singing but i was so impressed oh my he has this a most beautiful voice and the tone and the way he sings and the emotion is like between elvis presley and uh, uh between You're cutting my head oh sorry <laughs> I, I can i can reach that yeah and, and it's like elvis presley and johnny cash oh my god which are my one of my favorites vo favorite voices uh, wow. in, in that genre so Oh my gosh, I was so amazed and actually Dale was complaining that it didn't come out right. No, it was terrible. The songs, that they didn't have the right key for me. They couldn't put it in the right key. Their machine wouldn't work that way. So I was way out of range and it didn't sound good at all, except for the third song, which wasn't bad. And I don't think you caught much of that song. I caught half of it yeah, because I, yeah. I didn't have space on my card. Right, right. But I want to show you now. But it was still okay. It was fun. It was something else. Yes. We got a chance to get out and unwind a little bit from the conference mm -hmm. you know yes you can't work all the time well That's you do right. but <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Whoops. Wow, this phone is loud. <laughs> I'm getting feedback. Um, we're at the Aquarius. We wanted to know if we could get a cab to take us over to the South Desert Drive. I'm sorry, South Desert Hideout. To the hideout? To the bar. Thank you. We'll be out in front. I've been out in the 
trails and the desert areas I still can't believe I'm here um, I just wanted to share with you a thought that I had like a personal thought about doing all these conferences and stuff like that and you know um, a very short while ago I still was thinking I had this sensation okay wh what is this what am I doing how did this come about? Like this old Gosha uh, that is a more anti-social and just in her own world and not coming out publicly, publicly with stuff and not speaking publicly was 
was clashing with this with this public Gosha, which even now is, is just like a strange thing to me because I'm not a public person. I never really wanted to be one. It's not my aspiration. It's uh, I'm not even sure I really truly enjoy it. But yesterday, when I was on the desert, and I was okay trying to connect with my other Gosha, not a conference public Gosha. And I kind of felt one with a new public Gosha. <laughs> I feel like I'm going through some kind of a transition process where there is no separation. It's all me. I'm integrating my older self, a non-public person, person and, and the new public me, which is also me. It's like I'm growing into this new me and it doesn't feel like a clash. I don't need to be going away into the desert to feel myself like that other public me is not me. I feel I'm actually integrating all of them in one and I feel okay. And I feel okay with, with the conference Gosha too. Even though before my other Gosha would never imagine that. So, so it's quite, quite, quite strange this feeling, but it's strange, but it feels okay. I feel okay doing what I'm doing, um, being in public. <laughs> and before I didn't think that, I thought I would have to go into the desert by myself or somewhere to recover my, myself. But that public Gosha is not not myself, it is me too and I feel I am doing myself. I am being myself and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I don't feel that conflict. I am both. I am a non-public me and I am a public me too. Doing what I what I feel I'm supposed to be doing. So I am in that moment right now, transition into integration of all layers of myself.